Chapter 1. Welcome to the Revolution. A Case Study on Exercise and the Brain. On a slight swell of land west of Chicago stands a brick building, Naperville Central High School, which harbors in its basement a low-ceilinged, windowless room crowded with treadmills and stationary bikes. The old cafeteria, its capacity long dwarfed by enrollment numbers, now serves as the school's cardio room. It is 7.10 a.m., and for the small band of newly minted freshmen lounging half asleep on the exercise equipment, that means it's time for gym. A trim, young physical education teacher named Neil Duncan lays out the morning's assignment. Okay, once you're done with your warm-up, we're going to head out to the track and run the mile, he says, presenting a black satchel full of chest straps and digital watches. Heart rate monitors of the type used by avid athletes to gauge their physical exertion. Every time you go around the track, hit the red button. What that's going to do, it's going to give you a split. It's going to tell you, this is how fast I did my first lap, second lap, third lap. On the fourth and final lap, which will be just as fast if you do it right, he says, pausing to survey his sleepy charges, you hit the blue button. Okay? And that'll stop your watch. Your goal is, well, to try to run your fastest mile. Last but not least, your average heart rate should be above 185. Filing past Mr. Duncan, the freshmen lumber upstairs, push through a set of heavy metal doors, and, in scattered groups, they hit the track under the mottled skies of a crisp October morning. Perfect conditions for a revolution. This is not good old gym class. This is zero-hour P.E., the latest in a long line of educational experiments conducted by a group of maverick physical education teachers who have turned the 19,000 students in Naperville District 203 into the fittest in the nation, and also some of the smartest. The name of the class refers to its scheduled time before first period. The objective of zero-hour is to determine whether working out before school gives these kids a boost in reading ability and in the rest of their subjects. The notion that it might is supported by emerging research showing that physical activity sparks biological changes that encourage brain cells to bind to one another. For the brain to learn, these connections must be made. They reflect the brain's fundamental ability to adapt to challenges. The more neuroscientists discover about this process, the clearer it becomes that exercise provides an unparalleled stimulus, creating an environment in which the brain is ready, willing, and able to learn. Aerobic activity has a dramatic effect on adaptation, regulating systems that might be out of balance and optimizing those that are not. It's an indispensable tool for anyone who wants to reach his or her full potential. Out at the track, the freckled and bespectacled Mr. Duncan supervises as his students run their laps. My watch isn't reading, says one of the boys as he jogs past. Red button, shouts Duncan. Hit the red button. At the end, hit the blue button. Two girls named Michelle and Chrissy pass by, shuffling along side by side. A kid with unlaced skateboarding shoes finishes his laps and turns in his watch. His time reads 8 minutes, 30 seconds. Next comes a husky boy in baggy shorts. Bring it on in, Doug, Duncan says. What'd you get? Nine minutes. Flat? Yeah. Nice work. When Michelle and Chrissy finally saunter over, Duncan asks for their times, but Michelle's watch is still running. Apparently, she didn't hit the blue button. Chrissy did, though, and their times are the same. She holds up her wrist for Duncan. Ten twelve, he says, noting the time on his clipboard. What he doesn't say is, it looked like you two were really loafing around out there. The fact is, they weren't. When Duncan downloads Michelle's monitor, he'll find that her average heart rate during her ten-minute mile was 191, a serious workout for even a trained athlete. She gets an A for the day. The kids in Zero Hour, hardy volunteers from a group of freshmen required to take a literacy class to bring their reading comprehension up to par, work out at a higher intensity than Central's other P.E. students.